Some painful circumstances that my poor soul could not flee. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you so much for joining in on tonight. To members of the Mount Olive Church, good evening, love you, miss you, cannot wait to see you. And then to all of our visiting friends who are also members of the body of Christ, uh, thank you so much for studying the word of God with us. We hope that in some way this time in the word uh, with other believers is encouraging, it is inspirational, and uh, you feel all the better. Again, we are uh, away from each other, and at the same time, we are connected. And so, again, thanks to each and every one of you 
for making this commitment and fulfilling the commitment each Wednesday night at 7 o'clock to study the Word of God. Again, please, as you are praying to God, praying for others uh, who are sick, those who are in the midst of bereaved, those who are looking after the sick, family members and all of that, let's also continue to exercise common sense, good wisdom. Uh, let's continue to mask up, wash up, and, of course, back up uh, during this pandemic. We laid the foundation on last uh, Wednesday as it relates to discouragement. We are living in discouraging times. And so is there a word from the Lord? Is there a word we can put on discouragement? Is there a word for discouragement? And we believe uh, there is. And so we laid the foundation on last uh, Wednesday. And so tonight we want to talk about those times when it seemed as if uh, encouragement is nowhere to be found. It is as if encouragement is as if hope uh, is seemingly takes a vacation and uh, is nowhere to be found. Uh, and so we want to talk about uh, what do we do during those uh, times. Now, we want to begin by talking about the source of discouragement. We have this picture about people who watch you. I want us to put that on the screen. And uh, I, I want you to know that oftentimes the source of discouragement comes from other people. Uh, no matter who you are, no matter um, your assignment in the kingdom, um, the devil has a way of using people uh, to uh, discourage you, to impede your progress. Uh, he wants to rob you of your joy and your peace of mind. And, and he often uses people uh, to discourage us. So let's take a look at where does discouragement come? Where does it come from and in what form? Well, one uh, source of discouragement is that we've all had to, at some point in time, deal with rumors. We've all had to deal with rumors. Now, when it comes to rumors... Uh, that suggests that people are simply talking about you. Uh, the information doesn't necessarily have to be validated. Uh, the information doesn't necessarily have to uh, be confirmed. But there are times when people just simply talk about you. Again, they're not concerned about whether that is true or not. They will talk about you. And then when you hear... Uh, that people are talking about you, and when you hear sometimes what they are saying about you, it can hit you in the gut. It can be a source of discouragement, especially uh, if we are functioning under the illusion that since we're not bothering anybody, nobody is bothering us. No, there are people out there who will spread rumors about you. So when we hear rumors, that means people are talking about you. Another source of discouragement comes from falsehood. That's just a nice, tidy way of saying people will lie on you. Now, there's a little difference between rumors and falsehoods. Rumors, basically, people are just kind of talking about you. Falsehood, these are individuals who are literally talking against you. These are individuals who do not want you to make it. They do not want you to be happy. They do not want you to be successful. They do not uh, want uh, your name to be spoken well of. They do not care for you. And there are people, believe it or not, who major in spreading falsehoods about people. And there again, when someone tells a falsehood on you, it hurts. Sometimes it's the people who are closest to you. It's not a total stranger, but it can be someone who is close to you. It can be a family member. It can be an individual that you work with. It can be an individual who lives near you. And so falsehoods, regardless of where they come from, they can discourage us because you're trying to go in the right direction you're trying to have impact in the lives of people. You're trying to uh, um, care for your people. And then there are those who will spread falsehood. So 
That's, again, it's a little different than rumors. Again, rumors, people can talk about you. Falsehood, people will talk against you. And then we have this other source of discouragement. Sometimes, sometimes gossip, gossip hurts us. Gossip is when individuals are literally talking at you. Sometimes the very people who gossip, they want to make sure that the gossip gets back to you. That's why I kind of call it talking at you. Uh, they are cowards, and so they will not, you won't hear it from them, but they will drop it in somebody else, and then that person will see to it uh, that it gets to you in some type of form. And so whether it be rumors, falsehood, or gossip, each of these can be a source of discouragement. But then there's some other uh, items on the list that can be a source of discouragement. Again, Satan will use whomever uh, is available, and so he uses people against people. So not only do you have rumors, falsehoods, and gossip, but then you can also have people who for no apparent reason, or let me just say, a reason that is not known to you, they are jealous of you. Okay? So, so you will have people, sometimes you don't even know them, uh, sometimes they don't even know you, but it's something that, they, that you have, it is something that they see in you, um, and it in some way turns them on the inside, upside down, and they can be against you. They can be jealous of you. Then you have competitors. Uh, you will, sometimes Satan will use people who will, who will compare themselves against you. Again, you don't have to know them. Uh, but, but he can use people who, for whatever reason, they will compare themselves to you. Where you live, what you drive, on and on and on, on and on and on. And you have no idea that these people are comparing their lives with you. They're comparing their children. Uh, they're comparing their children with your children, your spouse with their spouse, your home, on and on and on. And it, it doesn't make any sense, and yet it, it is also a reality. So sometimes when people respond in a certain way to you, it's because they are jealous. They are jealous. They're jealous of you. And that, that, can, that, that can hurt you, okay? That can come back to bite you. And then lastly, well, a couple of more enemies, and then you can also add family to the list. Sometimes um, we, we, we all, there are times when we don't have enemies, but there are some times when people see us as enemies, okay? And so, and so here again, you know, it's good that you love everybody. It's good that you pray for everybody. It is good that you will help anybody. It is good that you don't mind sharing with people. It is good that you look out for people. But listen, everyone is not like you. And so we have to learn, as someone said, quit looking and expecting people to be you. There are some people who are against you. There are some people who are out to destroy you. There, and again, when, when you are being used of God, when you mind your own business, when you're looking out for others, when you're on the Lord's side, you become a threat to that dark kingdom. And he will look for opportunities. And individuals, because the only way uh, the enemy can get us is that he has to go through somebody. He has to use others. And so we all, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have enemies. Okay? And that's why Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 and following, you've got to put on the whole armor of God. And then lastly, sometimes the source of our discouragement comes from the people who are closest to us, come from the people that we love the most, family. Okay? Sometimes that becomes your source of discouragement. Uh, heard this years ago. Uh, sometimes uh, our, our I don't, perhaps it's all the time, but the only people, the, the people who can make you the angriest are those you love the most. And so, uh, again, so sometimes our source of discouragement can come from the very people that we live with, 
there are people who are, we have the same blood running through our veins. So, so th this is just a, a general list of, of the source of discouragement. And again, it can come from individuals who are being used by the enemy. And, and watch this. Sometimes people are not even aware that they're being used by the enemy. But you have to know. That is why Paul tells us this battle is not against flesh and blood. Do not fight the people who are fighting you. Because the real enemy, they're not the real enemy. Okay? They're being used. And so it is very important that we put discouragement in its proper context. And we'll talk about that on down the line as to how we respond to sources of discouragement. Let me put this statement of summation up uh, for this first category in terms of source of discouragement. I heard Pastor Tyree Price say this. He said, the Holy Spirit has never inspired anyone to plot the downfall of others. Say that one more time. The Holy Spirit, says Pastor Price, has never inspired anyone to plot the downfall of others. And at the same time, at the same time, the enemy uses people, okay? And sometimes those people will try to spiritualize their actions uh, against you, all right? You are not the enemy. They are not the enemy. But at times we're being used, both are being used by the enemy. So these are just some source. These are some of the sources of discouragement. Well, let's move to the second category, and let's look at how vast uh, the scope of discouragement in terms of, of, of how it, it crosses generations, it crosses countries and nations. Sometimes entire nations okay, can be discouraged. You, you, you think of Nigeria. You think of it is on the list of being one of the most dangerous nations in the world because of the crime and all of that. And so there's major discouragement uh, in that particular nation. You think about communities at times. Think about what happened with Superstorm Sandy, Sandy coming through New Orleans. That entire community was discouraged. Depression. Uh, I mean, it, it was widespread. And of course, to some degree, the community has resurfaced, has rebound, but there are still areas in New Orleans that are still, you know, dilapidated. I mean, you're inhabitable. You cannot live them. There are no dwelling places, uh, grown, grass grown up and all of that. And so we've seen entire nations or nations that have experienced major discouragement. Depression is really uh, is, is, is high there. But then you also community. But then also families. I was reading some time ago, and I try to read it um, often, especially when I'm doing funerals. Uh, the, it's entitled The View from the Hearst, where Joe and his wife, Joe Bailey, he and his wife, they had to bury three sons at one time. And he talks about um, how uh, burying his three sons, the, the toll that it took on he and his wife, and, and how... Uh, so many people had just talked about, you know, you're a Christian, and so death don't affect you the same way it affects everybody. Uh, people have spoke against, you know, grief and grieving, and need to get a counselor and all this. So he wrote that book, you know, A View from the Hearst. And so m there, there are times where families have been discouraged. I mean, everybody in the household. Situations have, have, have hit the family and has shaken that family's very foundation. But then you also have churches who sometimes uh, experience vast discouragement. Sometimes it's a scandal that happens at a church. Sometimes it's the death of a senior pastor, long-standing pastor, key individuals in the life of the church, or a tragedy that takes place in the life of that church, and the entire church is shaken. The church is shaken, is knocked to its knees. And so this speaks of the scope of discouragement. It doesn't just happen to individuals, as he was talking about earlier. No, it, it's, it's on a larger scale, a vast uh, scale. Let me look at this statement of summation. No individual group or pedigree is immune 
of discouragement. It happens to us all. It happens at every level. No organization is exempt from it, on and on and on. Well, let's move to uh, what does discouragement look like? Uh, how do we recognize it? Uh, what, what are some possible signs of discouragement? And I share with you that we were going to walk through certain um, uh, chapters in the book of Nehemiah because uh, it's a great uh, illustration of how uh, a nation, a people can be discouraged and they work through the process of discouragement. Uh, they don't go around it, but they literally have to work through discouragement. And so I, I want you to take your Bible now and open it to Nehemiah chapter 4. And, and we're going to look at verses 10, 11, and 12. And, and I want you to hear this and because these are some of the signs of, of discouragement. Nehemiah chapter 4. Uh, uh, verse number 10 it begins in Judah it was said the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing okay so 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 one sign of discouragement is weariness tired uh, weariness uh, sometimes the weight of what you are doing is not just the weight of what you are doing, but sometimes it's how long you've been doing it. And so they had been engaged in the restoration, in the building of that wall, the gates in the holy city of Jerusalem, and they had been at it for a while. And just the, the challenges of doing it day in and day out had taken a toll on them. And so one sign of discouragement is when people become tired. Is when weariness sets in. So you got to be careful um, when you go to bed tired. When you don't sleep because you're tired. And then when you wake up you're tired. Okay. That, that's. Uh, that, that, that means we're in a place of, of discouragement because all we're experiencing, weariness. So, so that's a sign. Be, be careful with, 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 weary, with weariness. A second uh, sign, we stay with the verse, is, is that of, of burn out. Okay? With weariness, you stay at it. Burn out, you don't have anything to contribute. You, 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 you are, you, you are on E. No fumes, you know. You, if the car gonna move, it's because it's downhill, and and you got a, a push. But burnout means you are on E. You have nothing to give. You are empty. Uh, you, you, you have nothing else left. And so, you, you hear it. The verse it says, it says. Um, the strength of those who bear the burdens uh, is failing. And then it says there is too much rubble. They couldn't do anything with it. They could not do anything else with it. It seems as if the more rubble they were moving, the more rubble needed to be moved. That's a psychological matter there. And so... If you've ever experienced burnout, then you know exactly uh, what I'm talking about. Again, you have nothing to give. You, ha you have nothing left. You are on E. You don't have fumes. It, it's a wrap, so to speak. And so he, these are signs of discouragement. And so sometimes um, uh, we, are, we are asking of people who are tired and burnt out to do, to give more, to do more. And they... they they have nothing left to give. But not only do we sometimes ask people who are tired and burn out to do more and to give what they do not have, we even ask that of ourselves. Okay? And we just keep going. If I can just make it to the end of the month. If I can just, if I can just, just hang in there. It's going, after a while, I got a break coming. No. Don't wait till you or on E to recognize 
you're in a bad place. This is what is called what we need to do preventive. We, we, we do not need to be reactive. We need to be preventive. We need to prepare in advance. And so here, the people, weary and they are burned out. These are signs of discouragement. But then there's another sign here. Same verse, and it says, uh, verse, uh, s- s- verse 10, the sea clause, by ourselves, we will not be able to what? Rebuild the wall. That speaks of failure. Okay. You know, when we're experiencing failure, when we're tired and we're burnt out, it's a different type of failure. Because then we start feeling as if we are what we're feeling. We fail often, but we are not failures. We are more than what? Conquerors, right? We can do all things through what? Christ, who is our strength, okay? And so these are all uh, powerful passages of Scripture. But again, we have to know those Scriptures in their proper context text okay so here the people failure they're they're up against it and they 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 are tired they have nothing else to uh to give and and they are now uh thinking uh that they are uh what they have been experiencing and of course many of us if not all of us have have been there we've known uh discouraging times but then lastly, here's another sign. Here's another sign, and that is F-E-A-R. Verse 11, and our enemies, our enemies said, they will not know or see till we come among them and destroy or decimate them and stop the work. Okay? Okay. Stop. And then the word that they heard got to them. Okay? The word that they heard got to them. And now fear has set in. Let me read the rest of that. Verse number 12. At that time, the Jews who lived near near them came from all directions and said to us ten times, you must return to us. Fear has now said. So these are all signs, signs of discouragement. Do they all happen at the same time? I, I don't know. It's possible. But can they happen one at a time? Yes. Can one be so overwhelming? Absolutely. So, again, these are signs of discouragement. There again, we've all known weariness. We've all experienced burnout. We've all experienced failure. And we have all had to face our fears. And so this statement of summation, here again, these were God's people. These were God's servants. But again, look at this statement of summation. God's people are not always hopeful. We're not always full of hope. We're not. We will know discouragement. And again, that gives us um, empathy. That enables us to uh, relate to other people who are not necessarily a part of our members of the household of faith. So we can relate to all the stuff that people are experiencing now in the world. We can relate to that because we too, at some level, are experiencing discouragement. Okay? So, so, so we are no different um, than others as it relates to we're not better than they are. Okay? We too will know seasons of discouragement. We, too, will know failure. We will know burnout. We will know weariness. We will know fear. Okay. But let me give you, I went down, a, you can type in uh, sayings for discouragement, words for discouragement, and you can just come up with a list of catchy phrases, catchy sayings for times of discouragement. And I just kind of condensed a couple of them. Uh, let me give you four. Number one, take time to enjoy where you are. Take time to enjoy where you are. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes in our homes, uh, our offices, um, uh, sometimes um, 
you know, the familiarity has just, we have not, we've, the familiarity has lost its luster. The familiar has lost its, its, uh, its uh, elegance. It has lost uh, its beauty. So, but look again, though. Look again. Look at it through fresh lens. Okay? Sometimes that means you might want to change the furniture or something like that. Or, or whatever it means for us to think about where we are and enjoy it. Think about where we are uh, as it relates to um, years we've been working, uh, years we've been married, um, um, the ages of our children, our grandchildren, on and on and on. Just, just take, take a little time and just think again uh, at where we are and, and see if we can enjoy it in a fresh, uh, new, interesting way. So take time to enjoy where we are. Here's a second one. Sometimes Sometimes you've got to, that's a typo, we hopefully corrected that. Sometimes you've got to let go of unhappiness to experience happiness. Okay. okay. Yeah. Guess what? Guess what? When we try to hold somebody in prison by unforgiving them, by not forgiving them, guess who becomes the prisoner? We do. So sometimes in order for us to get to another place, a place of happiness, we've got to do whatever we can to get rid of the source of our unhappiness. Okay? So sometimes you've got to let go of unhappiness to experience happiness. Here's another one. Go 24 hours without complaining. Try to have a no complaining Monday. Or whatever day is your worst day. You tend to kind of complain on that day. Designate, say, God, I'm going to have one day where I'm not going to complain not one time. I refuse to complain. So try to see if we can go 24 hours without complaining. Then there's another one. Be patient. Some things take time. It's amazing to me that, that God is going to use circumstances and time to take us to another level. He's going to use time and he's going to use circumstances as kind of the seed for us to grow. If we're going to prosper, if we're going to go to another level, okay? If we're going to uh, experience uh, maturation, maturity, God's going to use time and he's going to use circumstances. So we can forget it's going to happen when I want it to happen. And we can forget there's nothing bad going to happen to me. You can forget that. You can't forget it because God is going to use those circumstances that sometimes make us uncomfortable. They, they challenge us, okay? But then he's going to say it's going to take time. God has never done anything at the, at the, the time that I thought he was going to do it. He has never done anything. Uh, because, I mean, his, our concept of time is not the same as his, okay? It's, it's totally different. He's on a different time zone. So, so, again, be patient. Some things take time. All right, let me pause to see if we've got any questions. Any questions, Chris? All right. Again, uh, type in the comment section if you have questions or if you, you've had experiences and you want others, you want to share that with others, type it out. You never know what other people are going through. You never know where people are. And so you can share a testimony in the comment section, you know, condense it. But nevertheless, share it. And again, by all means, if you have questions, please type them out and we'll pause and address those questions. Let me give you your word for uh, the next six days. Now, hopefully, uh, the words we gave you last time, hopefully uh, they work for you. I need for you to comment if those words have been working for you. Uh, if you've been reading those words, uh, encourage somebody else to read those words because they work. All right. And I want you to read it as many times during that day as you need to. Okay? Read it out loud so you can hear it. Uh, when you hear it, then think about what you've heard. And then I want you to keep saying it to yourself until you're able to say it out loud without reading it. That's what it means to memorize. Okay? So read the word, think about the word, and then memorize the word. Okay. Let me give you, and I know you have it before you, but let me just... I'll give you these words starting tomorrow. Our passage is Philippians chapter 1, 
verse number 20. Philippians 1, verse 20. Our word for Friday, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 23. Thursday, our word is Philippians 1, verse 20. Friday, our word is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 23. And then Saturday, our word is Acts chapter 25, verse 18. Acts 25, 18. Sunday, Romans 6, verse 4. Monday, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And then on Tuesday, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Let me give you one more time. I know you haven't, but let me just say them out loud. Thursday, Philippians 1 and 20. Friday, 1 Thessalonians 1 and 23. Saturday, Acts 25, 18. Uh, Sunday, Romans 6 and 4. Monday, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Tuesday, Isaiah 40, verse 28. All right? Now, just before we leave, I want you to look at this picture that we're going to have on the screen here. There again, oftentimes we start out with saying what we cannot do. But I want us to go through these the lows, so we can appreciate the highs. I guarantee you that with God's help, presence of the Holy Spirit, and us yielding ourselves to the word of God, we can erase the T, and we can move from I can't to I can. It can become a, a reality. It can become um, something that we can file away as a testimony, and we can share with others uh, in terms of a difficult situation we were having. Uh, we were in a bad place, but God brought us through. And God doesn't always bring us up out of it. Sometimes God takes us through it. All right? So we got to pray our way through it. We don't always pray our way out of it, but you pray your way through it. And read Scripture through it. Think about scripture through it and memorize those scriptures. All righty. Okay. If we don't have any questions, God bless you. Again, be encouraged. The word of God uh, is conducive to anything that we may go through. Tomorrow morning, prayer call 630. Again, we're, we're walking through dangerous prayers and dangerously praying. So look forward to us engaging that topic again in a fresh way on tomorrow morning at 6.30. Again, we'll post the um, prayer line. We'll post the code so you'll have it so you can participate with us. Have a good night. Be safe. Enjoy the uh, VP debate. Take care. Don't worry about your haters. Your haters can't do nothing with you. Listen to these words. Love is patient, caring love is kind. Love is felt most. Love is felt most when, when it's genuine.